Oh, I think we're running. OK, so yeah, so this is just a, a this class on general Raspberry Pi stuff. Um, to me, it's like, I don't know, I kind of have like an interest in this stuff because I think it's cool. Uh, mm -hmm. You can do a lot with it. Um, not sure, like, you know, in the, in the you know, in, in the classroom environment, I don't know what age, like, would be appropriate for this stuff. Uh, well, I, I teach high school, um, okay. and I teach high school physics, and I teach AP Bio, and I teach anatomy and physiology, but I'm kind of curious about this just on my, I'm sorry about the dog in the background. Uh, my dog's clearly, oh, geez, this timing is appalling. Someone's probably walking past the front door and getting all excited, but, um, uh, I've just been curious about it because I remember like I, I do a lot of stuff on my bike I lead the bike club of Blue Island and I'm always looking for cool light effects and things that I can do and okay. my understanding from just watching some videos on Adafruit and stuff is that uh, the Raspberry Pi is just basically like your sort of micro computer that can help you to organize things like if I attach LED strip lights I might be able to make it do patterns or something um, and I, so I'm just curious about it because I don't know any foundational stuff. I want to learn more about like the basic thing so that I can figure out maybe ideas on ways I can work with it and what I can do with it. Am I, am I right or am I wrong on what this, what this is about? No, that's, that's certainly possible. Yeah. But, so yeah, we'll probably focus more on like what's, what's possible and what's not possible than, mm -hmm. than really like the intricate, intricate details on it. Yeah, that's what I figured. I just don't know enough about Raspberry Pi to know yeah. how to do stuff with it, you know? Like, I don't know about it as a thing versus, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I just, I thought, oh, hey, the library's offering a class. I'll learn more. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, there, so there's the, and this, like, I, the other one, that Arduino is the other one that's kind of, like, popular in the last few years. And uh, to me, I like Pi better, uh, but that's just preference. Uh, the, 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 like, description that I always remember the most that seems to make the most sense to me is just credit card, credit card size computer. Uh, so that's like anything you do on a computer, you can probably do like with Pi because it is a computer. Right. So that's the, you know, that's what the, uh, I actually have one here, which is sort of like, sorry, are you able to still see me or can you only see the screen? No, I can see both. I can see both okay. you, the screen and you. Oh, so, I don't think this one's ever been opened. Uh, you know, it's just like done like an unboxing or something. Yeah, actually, for, at some point they started making them in little, little lunch bags. Uh, um, this, so, idea for scale. So it's this big. So this is you know yeah. the size of my hand. And, uh, uh -huh. so this is it here, and here's just a, a big diagram. So today, uh, you know, basics which we're kind of going over right now. Uh, I don't. I there's a number of different models for these, and uh, we're probably just gonna have to look at the website because I don't have too many of the different models. I have kind of the okay. older version. Okay. And. Uh, we'll talk about some things that can be connected, and this is kind of like the skeleton of like what I was going to talk about. So, here's a kind of like uh, like exploded diagram of all the parts and everything. So that's this here, and basically it's just a it's a little tiny computer that. Uh, this is Pi three. There's a Pi four now, but the it runs off of micro USB, at least Pi 3 does and everything before that does. So micro USB is just like the same thing that like all the Android phones work off of and like- uh, Right, tons of other things, yeah. Yeah, a lot of, like, lot, lot, a lot of stuff. Uh, and then, you know, they have, so they have an ethernet port and they have a bunch of USB ports on it and uh, camera it port micro, and SD. Micro SD slot, okay. Yeah, so all this stuff is kind of like the base where it can be attached and then this, uh, this 40 pin GPIO is, you know, that's kind of like where a lot of the, the, I don't say the magic happens, but that's like where you can connect all these, this whole world of peripherals and it can be, um, you know, you can connect, uh, different kinds of, uh, like sensors, which we'll probably look at, like, you can get like these kits on Amazon where it's like, you get a hundred different types of sensors. It'll be like, uh, light sensors and, and infrared sensors, temperature sensors, a um, whole bunch of bunch of stuff. And you can attach like little like uh, little buzzers and, and little like uh, speakers and stuff or, or buttons to like light up or to be, you know, so button could be either, you know, a lot of times you get like an LED that's built in the button. So the button is something that you could either do to like push to make something happen as an input 
or the you know you could just be it, the button lights up when it wants you to do something right okay i can't open up a bunch of uh, new world of stuff so let's take a look at um yeah, actually first i wanted to look at their website because i can show you what is going on with all the different models And here we are. Okay, so here is the like official website and I'm just gonna look at the products page. Okay. So now they have Raspberry, 4, Raspberry Pi 4. Now they keep the same, like the, their price model is like, it's always $35. That's the, like, the thing that they try to stick to. So when you get a new version, it's good because the price doesn't stay the same and you usually get something that's uh, a lot better. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure these pictures are working. Um, now, I, I kind of like Pi 3 just because, like, I have a bunch of them and, like, it uses, like, the regular micro USB power. The new ones use... Um, like, USB-C? Yeah, USB-C. So I don't have any of those connectors. So, um, like, I would have to buy, a couple, like, an extra cable to make one of those work. Right. Which isn't really a big deal, but uh, it is what it is. Um, hmm. My pictures are working today. It's interesting. Uh, but uh, the point is, pretend there's pictures here. Basically, they all—they all—they almost look exactly the same as this, except you have like a couple of different ports. And then they also make a series called uh, Zero, which is basically like one of these without the pins and it's basically flat. So everything is like miniaturized. So it's like, uh, instead of like a full HDMI, it's like a micro HDMI or maybe a micro or mini HDMI. And uh, you know, the USB is like the micro USB and uh, doesn't have an ethernet port on it has wireless, uh, you can get them with wireless or not wireless built in. Those are only like five or 10 bucks. Uh, those are great. The, so Pi Zero is five bucks and Pi Zero W is $10. Um, but it's kind of like, uh, the price point sounds like awesome right away, but they kind of get you because it's like, well, you also need to buy an SD card to go into it. I mean, nowadays you get like 16 gigs for like five bucks, six bucks, something, it's not a big deal. Yeah, but it's not as cheap as you might think initially. So when you're doing these, um, the power source, I assume you're doing this from some sort of USB battery pack or something like that, or are you plugging it into uh, an actual computer or... Do you yeah. really just have the battery, you know, like a standard, yeah. you know, D cell or something? Number of different options. Uh, so many parts I'm trying to find. What I'm doing right now, as we speak, happens to be one running just for testing purposes. But basically, I'm just running like with one of these, those like generic cube. Uh, oh, okay, just a USB. USB things with a, you know, a generic um, micro USB cable. So, okay. you know, so that, that, you know, that's the simple way to do it. Now you can get a, um, what works really good for me is like a, a cell phone charger, like one of those bricks. Yeah. Those are like, you can get them there, you know, you can get them where they're like even smaller than, uh, even smaller than like the pie itself and it'll, it'll power for several hours at a time. Yeah. I have a lot of, um, geez, everything at once. A lot of these little um, anchor, uh, like USB, geez, yeah. wait, come on, no, 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 it's just, <laughs> It's just, and it, I guarantee you, it's some stupid call. Come on. I'm hitting this as off and it's still, geez, okay, I'm just gonna hang up, sorry. Um, I get all these phone calls, you know, even I'm on the, <laughs> I'm gonna put this on mute for a second. I'll, I'll just be quiet. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, but yeah, so the, yeah, the, the idea is that, yeah, any of those like, like USB recharger things that you can buy on Amazon, any of those will work. And uh, if you're really inclined, you can get a, oh, here it is right here. You can get a special uh, adapter, which is basically just like micro USB on one end, 
and the other end is uh, four AA batteries. So you can recharge, you know, and then if you get rechargeable batteries, you can do it. I think these like cell phone charger things are easier to use because then, you know, you don't have the, the batteries and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, you can get pretty big power banks that'll power for a long time. So that's the power. And let's see. So yeah, the different models again, and a lot of times uh, these work good with um, like display purposes. So like televisions, most mostly every television nowadays has a USB port on it, and the mm -hmm. Pi doesn't. Most all the Pies, that's kind of the thing is they don't use that much power. So you can basically you know attach it to the computer if you're doing like I'm sorry, attach it to a, a television screen if you're doing like um, uh, you know this works for good. Uh, like screen digital signage software or like uh, like home theater software or uh, things like that. So yeah, either power from the television or power from a power brick or power from the, the wall outlets. Uh, there's a number of different ways. So that's models, power, and yeah, we, eh, I don't know if we need to go too deep into all these little pins and everything, but uh, you know, done a bunch of different options for that. Okay, so now let's talk about more fun stuff. So the sensors that I was talking about, I saved this link for some reason. I think this is like one of those giant kits. Yeah, okay, so now you have, uh, and there's like a million of these kits. This one's like $100, you can find something much simpler. Um, but the point is that all these different things can be connected to uh, Raspberry Pi via those little GPIO pins. Mm -hmm. And if I get look at like this, um, you know, so you have LEDs, you can connect to it, you can get- um, The raindrop sorry. sensor, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so RGB LED, probably different colors uh, with the same LED, uh, flash yeah. LED, uh, laser emitter, a vibration switch, a red receiver, like a, like an old school remote or something. Yeah, tilt Buzzers. switches, yeah. yeah. A remote control, a lot of gas sensor. See, that could be really useful. Yeah. I saw so, you in fan life, my husband and I, like at least for vacation time, and like we could set up a little like sensor for, uh, you know, for- um, The house or something? A, yeah, like a propane sensor or something to go off. But. Yeah, yeah. I think like one of the like one of the first projects that I always see is like a general like um, outdoor like uh, like weather thing. And they they like make this like kind of project where they like have it uh, a humidity uh, sensor and a, a, a like a barometric pressure sensor and a temperature sensor and like all these things and it just you know, would sit outside and collect data about, uh, you know, what's going on with the weather. What's a breadboard? Yeah, so the breadboard is, I, well, let's find a picture. Um, so the breadboard is like, uh, uh, it's a board with a bunch of, uh, so like here's one. Mm. Uh, I'm not actually a fan of breadboards because I think they way overcomplicate um, the situation. But so like, here's an idea of the breadboard. So the idea is you'll take, you'll connect uh, from a pie, for example, you'll connect something to one of these pins and then you can connect uh, like jumper wires. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened wrong. But, oh, so, take like jumper wires, like some of these things, which is basically just a piece of metal with uh, the end of these are just pieces of metal. But basically, you can make a circuit. Um, and the breadboard, so basically, you're connecting, uh, these are connected in a certain way. and. The only way this ever made sense to me was when I looked at a very specific picture on the internet and it all made sense all of a sudden. Um, there's basically a, 
the way they're connected, the, the long ones are connected. Uh, it's easier when I show a picture. Okay, so the, it's just using it as sort of a way to expand out your GPIO pins so that they are uh, a little easier to work with or to figure out how to manipulate? Yeah, it, it's, it's nice because like a lot of this is just like kind of you plug and play and then like, you know, you, you stick the wire in and then it's connected and then kind of and see it. Running like a little resistor. I'm looking at this top picture. They're just running a little resistor through yeah. it? Or? Okay. Yeah, so this is... Sorry, like my own pictures in a way. Can't tell if that's. that's yeah, so basically, uh, yeah, you cannot. You make in a circuit with like you know the power. The, the power for, can come from like the Pi, for example, like one of the pins, and then that would connect to anything on one of these like red strips. And then like the you know the, the these four right here. I don't know if you can see this or not. I'm like pointing at the screen. Yeah. I'm also looking at the diagram down to the left that actually has it labeled like the power rail is the red, the ground rail is the blue, and yeah. then the green is the circuit area. All right, so you have to have a basic foundation and understanding circuits a little bit. Uh, you do, but well, for the breadboard, I'm going to say, yeah, but see like a simple, like a um, breadboard connection high, let's say you just want like an LED light or something. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, to connect like a LED or something, you know, isn't terribly different. You, you know, you just basically go in from like- Oh, uh, you just pop like it in, yeah, okay. okay. To um, an LED light to negative, which goes back to like the power source in this case, it's yeah. high, but it could be anything else. I mean, you could do this with like, the breadboard can be connected to like, uh, you know, some kind of external battery. It doesn't have to be high or Arduino or something. It. Right, and you could wire the series. It doesn't have to be parallel and stuff, right? Um, yeah, you can do different kinds of. Yeah, you can do different kinds of wiring. The, the like I said, the, the the problem with the breadboard is like to me, like a lot of the projects, like these, look pretty simple. But like a lot of the like pie based projects, at least, like the breadboard gets like out of control, and mm -hmm. like. Even like this LED, like this could be just as well, you know, like a direct connection with like one of these cables. Okay. Um, and I think that's easier because, um, oops, oh, there it is. Um, you know, in other words, this could be like, you know, you could take one of these cables and just like, you know, plug this directly on here. It sticks on there and then the other end could be, you know, an LED, which would basically just plug back in there. So you basically have two cables like hanging off this thing. You'd mm -hmm. skip the entire breadboard a lot of the time. So I Got prefer it. to just connect directly to the board, mainly because I'm working with like, I don't need like a lot of power for stuff. Like the Pi itself doesn't create a lot of power, but it can drive LEDs and stuff like that. And it can, um, you know, you can connect buttons to it and things like that. Mm -hmm. So for my purposes, it's like, oh man, skip the breadboard. It's like, it just way, it makes it way over complicated than it needs to be. And then you have an extra piece of equipment that you have to carry around, well, an extra little tiny board. But No, but I know if you're trying to do something, the whole point of using a pie is that you want it small and portable. Yeah. So if you use it. I'm, I'm a fan of these little like hot pluggable like cables. If you need like more power for something, then you probably end up needing uh, a breadboard because then you have to like kind of connect like an ex like an actual battery pack to it somehow and things. Um, so that's the idea uh, at least behind that. Um, but yeah, it wasn't it wasn't until like I'd done a bunch of stuff with breadboards and I didn't like I'm like so why does this work? And then like I finally saw the diagram of, like oh they're connected this way not this way. Um, so that's that. But yeah, a lot of um, you can kind of like already start thinking about like you know how to control something um, and, and then there's there's a ton of different projects we can look at that would just use like different types of um, in fact a lot of these like I mean you can kind of guess at what they do but I mean like tracking sensor that could be anything that could be is it tracking lights or you know so there's there's a lot of different kits that you tracking can sensor can it pick up motion like i'm just wondering if you wanted to like set up a a camera or something and you wanted it to trip when an animal walked past to take a picture sure uh, yeah you could do that with um well that you can do with just the regular 
Um, they make a camera module too, which is basically, actually here's a pie with, uh, actually, Here's a pie with a, a button attached to it, you know, just a little clicker button to make something happen. And then to me, it's like, it's just two cables to go. Right. Just like we're talking about like, oh man, skip the breadboard, just. Right, 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 exactly, yeah. So they make a, this has a, a camera attached to it. This is like just a little ribbon cable that kind of goes like in there. So for like tracking or something, that you can kind of do with like the generic uh, pie camera. And I think these you can get like five or 10 bucks. They're actually, the, the generic one is pretty cheap. But you can use software, you can do that with software, basically. Um, you could do, you know, you could also do it with sensors, it would probably be a more interesting, uh, like DIY project or school project. But to me, it's like, there's kind of like, well, there's already stuff that will just take like what the camera sees and the, the, you know, in software, you can kind of like, you know, then use computing power to extrapolate and say like, oh yeah, something moved into frame and then, you know, turn on recording or something like that. Um, so it's coming out. So yeah, you could use uh, so that could be done with a camera. That could be done with probably uh, any of these sensors. Okay, so parts. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, LED button, uh, LED lights. Uh, can't talk about that's one thing that could be just a signal that something happens. Uh, speaker buzzers. You can do. Um, well, so they have a like a headphone port on here, which could go to like external speakers if you wanted or just like a pair of headphones laying around. Um, but you can also do like uh, like piezo buzzers and things like that, something that kind of makes a little buzz noise. And that's kind of like another project to, to you know, make that make sound. Uh, yeah, resistors you kind of need for, um, best thing I could say about resistors is just follow what the guide tells you if you find a guide online. Um, I don't think I've really, I know I have burned out like one or two of them, but I don't know if that was, problem with not using resistors properly or just bad power supplies or just thing died at some point. Um, buttons, yeah, buttons. A little clicker when you had that looked like a little raspberry tip, I mean a, a pencil tip. Yeah, yeah, you can get little like clicker buttons. This doesn't actually like make any sounds, but yeah, this is just like a little tiny, like you push it down. It doesn't really make, I like the, uh, the uh, those like tactile ones that make like a click when you press it. Yeah. Um, which, I have somewhere, but, um, but yeah, so you can get different buttons. You can get with LEDs built on, you can get, uh, they have like, giant buttons that I use for everything. I can't find them, but yeah, you can get just like a gigantic button if you want. Um, How big is gigantic? Uh, like across or like three inches across? Well, no, like, Three, like three inches across. If you if you search for like a you know giant button, they make button. You might realize like easy buttons that Staples was doing. It's like yeah. a yeah. one you use. Yeah. I don't know how I don't know how big how big they can get. Like a uh, frame of reference here. They had a barricade light. That's a yeah, story. it could be something, you know, like that. Something that's just something that's obviously a button. Yeah, they're the big red button. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like the like the staples button. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that could be a, like an easy project to, you know, and like that could just be like uh, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, make a, make um something happen when you press the button. Like tell someone's for tell me the temperature of the day um over sound, you know, when you press the button, something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, magic eight ball type of thing, something like that. Um, also, I put this on there because it's kind of cool. I did uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, you can actually connect a uh, a Wiimote to like the you know like Nintendo Wii, the remote. Mm -hmm. So you can have a Bluetooth connection to the Raspberry Pi, and then that could be that could substitute as a button. And now it's wireless too, so <laughs> and opens up like another like oh, it's your Wii remote. That's hysterical. We yeah. actually have a Wii, so we still have a Wii Fit that yeah. we have float around. Yeah, I, I wouldn't think you'd be able to, but yeah, you can connect a Wii and then that could be, you know, the button. And then it's like, okay, well, it's almost like, uh, then it's like, okay, well, not only skip the breadboard, but skip the cable too. Just <laughs> yeah, right, because now you got the, the thing. Yeah. yeah, so, okay, so, because I did see that it had the Bluetooth option. So, um, could you control it from your phone as well if it's got Bluetooth? Um, probably. I haven't done that. There probably, there's probably a bunch of apps that do that. I haven't done that. 
In fact, a lot of like, yeah, a lot of the DIY projects, like when you, especially like hit like on Amazon or something, they usually like come with like an app to like if you're making like a robot or something. It's like, yeah, we also like have, have an app that you can download. Um, don't know like how the core of that works. Um, I mean, really it kind of works the same way. It's just a Bluetooth connection to your phone. Your phone could be, see, I don't know like enough about making phone apps to kind of know how to like do that without the help of somebody Some else's. Sorry, right, okay. That oh. makes sense, but at least it's an option. Yeah. Because I think, I mean, if it's got Bluetooth, I mean, you technically, I don't see why you couldn't use it with your phone. Yeah. And yeah, there could be some just generics. You use it. When you use it with your headphones, are they plug-in headphones? Yeah, because it was a, you were saying there was a jack for a plug-in headphone. Yeah, um, you can just you you can just connect like regular headphones to yeah. this. And, and, so you, you know. could connect a little speaker then too, right? Yeah, yeah. If you have powered speakers, it could be loud. You know how the headphones. You know it's not going to get that loud. You're not going to hear it unless right. you're like right next to it and sitting, or either either have them on your head or you're like right next to it and it's on the table. Right. But if you had just like a pair of speakers that plugged into the wall, right. then yeah, you crank it if you want to. That's that. Um, oh, products. Oh, we kind of looked at the products page. Mm -hmm. Then they actually have more on their website that I thought was important. So this is their official website again, and they have, and so they kind of have the basics, which sometimes kind of makes up like, if I run a class like this, like you could just spend the entire class on like, kind of how this works. Just browsing through, right. That's cool though. Yeah. It's great that they have- Give you good guides with pictures and stuff on like how to, you know, how to get your like, how to get your SD card in there and like how to connect it to your, to like a monitor and, right. you know, so they, they have pretty good documentation. You can print it out, cool. There's their thing. And you can log in and save your progress. That's cool too. It's very user-friendly for kids. Yeah, uh, okay, so. Let's see, what do I have here? Um, okay, so let's maybe, well, either I could do, at this point, either, you know, I could do, like, we could connect something and you just see the output format of monitor behind me with the default install. I don't know if that's really that interesting to you, but basically it's just, getting the software from their website and loading it onto an SD card and putting the SD card in and then connecting like HDMI to a monitor or something. So can I, I'm going to take a screenshot of these links really fast. Just so oh, sure. those just cause, Oh, although these are not the, Oh, these are, these are the actual, these are different projects that can be done. Yeah. But these are the way you've saved it or are these the actual email? I mean, um, no, these are just web links. Emails. Yeah. These are just like, you know, I kind of like Googled around for like different projects and I saved a couple of the links on some of the pages that I really liked. Yeah, but I'm just looking at these. I mean, are these your write-ups or are these? No, the, no, these uh, are some of like, these are just other people's like. Okay, uh, so, but no, I don't think you, I, I'm, if I want to do, if I'm going to use, if I'm going to type this all in, because these are not, these are long URLs. This is not really a URL. This is your this is your write-up of the real URL, or this is actually never mind. I can do a Google search if I know that I'm going to Ubuntu it. Ubuntu up it. I just look for twenty best Raspberry Pi. Yeah, Pi projects. yeah, they're they're like if I if you search for Raspberry Pi projects, they probably they probably came from the first page. Okay. I just like look through a couple that I saved. Yeah. Okay. I just want to know like if I want to search to find out more information. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, the one with just five projects on it, I skipped it, you know, 3,000, that's like more. <laughs> yeah, that's more, a little uh, overwhelming. The noise ratio is not that good. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, I get it. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, I saved a couple, though. let me just look at like one or two, Let's see why I saved it. So 20 projects, yeah. So these are like a lot of like, oh, that's a good idea. We could do something, you know, like with that. So our coffee machine. <laughs> yeah. Um, so web server, I don't know. That's kind of interesting. It, to me, I think that's better done. I mean, you could do it um, it's on a different manner. But uh, yeah, mail server, security system, like we kind of talked about. This could be like, you know, the equivalent of like the ring doorbells and stuff that mm -hmm. can be done with open source software and a pie or something. Um, LED surface, 
That might be kind of cool. Of course, this guy spent $150 on material. I like the idea of LED windows. I'm very interested in anything with light and color and bright yeah. light. To check that one out. Yeah. Okay, so he's playing Tetris on a table or something. <laughs> he's, I think, he says that he did it as a way to fake sunlight in a downstairs room. Yeah, I, I, so it looks like each tiny like thing on here. There's like a, a bunch of LED lights. Oh yeah, that's definitely LED table Tetris, right? Okay. Yeah. So, so that could be you know a number of. Things. And, I, and I've seen people like, uh, you know, like costumes and like Halloween stuff is kind of popular for that because then, you know, if like part of your costume is that it like lights up like when something yeah. happens or yeah. makes a noise or something and you're, you know, you have a remote control in your pocket or something. But Yeah, right. Uh, the answer, I don't know. Okay, here's another thing with like LEDs. Um, some of these hats are kind of cool. Hats are like the like the thing that would like sit on top of the like it basically connects over these pins again. Yeah. But this, yeah, like this is something that Corn hat. <laughs> was programmed in a certain manner to do light up in yeah. patterns. Certain patterns and stuff. And the unicorn hat has LEDs on it. Uh, you know, I'm not. This is the first time I've seen. Uh, the like the hat is like a generic term for like the anything that you put on top of the pie. Okay, Dash maybe the unicorn hat is the light version of it. Yeah, the unicorn. I think it's like somebody's branded. Um, yeah. That might be like the name of a company. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Uh, it looks like unicorn hat might be some sort of LED version of a uh, hat for the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, of a generic hat. So that's cool. Yeah, that's I mean, it, there, there's probably a whole bunch of like, there's a whole like world of different hats that you can. Yeah, yeah no, I get it. Right, it's just a, but that's just a generic term. Okay, so now I'm getting, I'm getting the lingo. This yeah. is good. I'm getting the Raspberry Pi lingo. And here's like the the mobile weather and air measuring station again. Yeah. Uh, but I could see that being like really handy when you're camping or bike packing. You know, like you've got op options there. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Get your own little portable weather station with you. You can kind of get a little update, even if you're outside of internet range. Yeah, and the magic mirrors are kind of popular too. I haven't done that. Uh, like... I have a picture. Um, I've seen a lot of these, but like they're basically like there's a pie behind a mirror. And the, the mirror is is still a mirror, but it has like display either behind it or basically they make it where you can see the display and the mirror at the same time. So it's kind of like you can put morning. like a clock up in a corner or something or yeah, and it's gonna show you what the weather is today while you're you know brushing your teeth or something like that. <laughs> um, what or what the traffic is, so like before you go to work. <laughs> but there's there's a lot of these. Um, like I said, I just put like a couple, but you know, there, like one of the other links was like 1,000 projects or something. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Like, <laughs> 1,000 projects. Like, wow. I think like the short ones where it just says like you know 20 or something. Those are like more to find yeah. more good stuff. Well, right. Yeah, right. it's a good idea. Just gonna look at one other website here to see if there's some good ideas. Uh, weather station again. Hi, Twitterbot. Um, wireless print server. Radio state. Yeah, so you, know, you can make a radio out of it. But, so if you're going to make a radio, don't use Pi for you your Pi. Don't use Pi. You can do that a lot cheaper. Yeah. yeah. Like that's, that's, yeah. A lot of these, it's like overkill for. Yeah. I use some of these at the library for like, um, digital signage, which we were talking about, and like, okay, like if you're just going to show a picture like every five seconds or whatever, don't use regular Pi, just use Pi Zero or something. Um, yeah, right, right. You don't need anything to This is something. like overkill for a lot of things. Yeah. Um, router, file server, network monitoring tool. Here's an example of a screen. That's probably good. Um, can you connect HDMI? But you can connect. 
I have the same screen with you. You get little screens that will connect. There's actually a screen connector directly. That seems like it'd be, well, this in this Lucite box, that's gotta be friggin' expensive. So that's the, well, th these, because th of the size of the screen, I think it's, I think this is like 30 bucks or something. Okay. So it is something you might be able to. Yeah, you can get a, and then if you want like a bigger one, I think that there's another one that I use that's like seven inches diagonally, and that's like 70 bucks or something. Mm, okay. That's kind of like, I have a very specific use for, for that, but um, yeah, you can do HDMI or you can do, there's like a special, um, somewhere on here, there's a very tiny port that we'd have to go back to the diagram to see that says display. Um, but I've also seen where they make these where, you know, like this will fit together. And basically there's like a tiny HDMI cable that just goes like from here to here. Okay. So it could be done in that manner too. That's cool. Good example of a screen doing something. This guy's just testing his internet response time all the time. Yeah, but that could be some kind of monitoring thing. That could be, I don't know, maybe like a door counter or something like that. Uh, all right, Minecraft, Minecraft uh, might be popular for the school. A lot of these, like, see, to me, so you can run, you know, with Pi, you can run like a Minecraft server, or a DNS server, or a file server, or a web server, which are all cool. But to me, it's like, well, you could do that with anything, you know? <laughs> that could be like an, an old computer that's like sitting in a corner somewhere, just repurpose it and just throw it in a closet somewhere. I don't, I guess it's nice because it's using less power and things like that. But, uh, I kind of like using, you know, the, the input output stuff. It's kind of more interesting to me. Time lapse camera. They make a bunch of different cameras now. Uh, they make like infrared and all kinds of stuff. VPN server, motion capture security system. It's actually pretty good software for uh, that. Chewit. Hmm. I suppose that's a regular camera and a display. I don't even actually see where the Pi is. Maybe it's behind here. Um, I can show you some some uh, software for that though, if you want. Yeah, Assistant, Media Center. These are really popular. These are um, just a method to like kind of house your your video library to show on your television. Hmm, okay. I use a couple of these in my house because you can do uh, streaming and other things. And it's nice. Uh, distance sensor, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, distance sensor might be useful for my physics class. Yeah. Yeah, so like here's another example of like when the breadboard just gets out of control. Like, I mean, <laughs> like I think even with the diagram, I'd be like, wait, what is going on here? <laughs> yeah, 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 what's going where, wait, what? Yeah, that is pretty complicated. Yeah, but so that's the, the that so that's the connector that normally connects the the breadboard to the uh, the pie. Basically, it connects over all of the pins. Whatever that is, that twenty strip, that twenty one. Yeah, so every right. single pin gets connected to uh, that board right there. I'm assuming in this diagram, the two little uh, circles far to the left, that's some sort of the sensor device. Yeah. That must be the actual distance sensor. Because the only thing that's on here is the distance, which I assume is a distance sensor. And then- You've got uh, a readout then that tells you the distance. Yeah. And you've got the ribbon that's connecting the breadboard. And you've yeah. got a pie, which obviously has a power source. And it looks like it's got a little SunDisk flash drive up there. Yeah, that, well, uh, I suspect this, it's, it's a SanDisk branded USB something, but I- it's like a little flash drive or something? I-, I Presume, yeah, either that's, either that is just a USB storage drive and they're just using it to like save data or something, or that could just be for like a wireless mouse and keyboard or something like that. Okay. Right. Um, well, there's a USB, I don't know. Yeah, my guess is that they're yeah. just storing that's something I could research some more. And it looks like they mounted it on just a piece of foam to keep it what, stable? Uh, tied to a yeah. piece of foam? Yeah, I've done, I've done that. <laughs> that's, uh, I think it's upstairs that I've used uh, foam stuff like that to kind of make portable versions of stuff. Wi-Fi extender, 
Twitch, uh, what is, is it? Uh, Twitch, like the streaming and yeah, the streaming service. A Twitch bot. <laughs> so, like, if you're doing Twitch a lot, you got options, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Special gaming machine. These are popular too. Well, yeah. yeah, you can do, people make like their own like arcade cabinets and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, they're mounting a joystick and buttons and stuff like that. Oh, a joystick is so teeny cute. Yeah. Our TV, here's the stream, here's the, um, um, the media software again, mm -hmm. automation. Yeah, and then there's all a bunch of, I mean, nowadays everybody's like, you know, yeah, pulling the lights and stuff. Yeah, Alexa or whatever, yeah. I don't have to worry about doing a Raspberry Pi for that, but still. Yeah. I don't know. I've seen people talk about using it as a computer. I mean, you can, you can get, probably, you can, like, watch, like, YouTube videos and stuff on it. Um, not even like the new Pi, this Pi 4 has like dual HDMI displays that you can do like 4K on. So like the computing power is there, but you, you know, most like most people, like all you can run on these is like some flavor of Linux. So you, you're not gonna be able to get, like win up, run Windows or Mac. Yeah, right, right, right. On it. It's still gonna require a fair amount of code. That's okay though. It's still that could be used for useful for educational purposes. And sometimes when you do these interfaces, it's fun to get kids excited about things. Yeah. Okay, cool. um, I don't think I actually have too many more slides. Uh, but yeah. So projects. So some of the stuff that I personally done for is the. Um, so like the RetroPie thing is just like you know we load in like uh, old video game emulation software and with like and then you can buy like. Off brand. Space Invaders, we saw those two there. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, and that's popular, you know, because like the whole thing fits in like a Ziploc bag and then just connect it to the TV. Uh, so Cody is like the, the, the um, you know, media library thing. Can also do streaming and things like that. I, I use that a lot to like watch movies on and stuff. Um, cameras. Um, so yeah, we kind of talked about the cameras already. There's um, you know, this is like a really easy uh, security camera, basically. Uh, you can find software that will just basically turn this into a device that just sits and connects wirelessly and streams out, you know, HD video. Um, but wouldn't you, you would still have to have a power source for this, right? I mean, this would be, can yeah. you hardware that or does it have to be through a battery pack? Well, uh, yeah, so that, because if it's going to be like a camera, you probably want it on all the time. So you probably want to get a power source for it. Now you could do a battery, but the battery's going to die. Uh, so to me, like one of those giant, um, well, to me, the best thing to do is, is get it plugged in somehow. Um, but, if, you know, it's just a one cable, right? Because you can probably connect, like to access it over the network or something, it probably can connect it to your wireless or something. Um, yeah, so to me, it's it's just one cable. But I guess if you really wanted to, I mean, you can get like, you know, these the giant, uh, you know, power bricks. I have like this, uh, I have like, like this thing that is just like a giant. Uh, it's like a cell phone charger that'll charge your phone like twenty times over and over again, or like it'll power power uh, a Raspberry Pi for like I don't even know how long it would be, probably <laughs> at least several days. Yeah. I don't know, I've been tried uh, to find out how long that works. So yeah, that's uh, that's one thing. And people do, um, yeah, there's a lot of different software you can use for stuff like for, for cameras. Um, I, I, I use like the simple one that just says like stream video constantly, and then you can access it in your browser right, from- Right, 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 right. Right, if you just, I, yeah. Yeah, they make other, you know, where they, you can save also to the same, like the SD card that's on there, but then it's like video, so you run out of storage almost immediately. Um, to me, the best setup is say, you know, just make a Pi, a streaming device to tell like one of your computers at home or in your school or, or library to save that data. So save that on an actual computer somewhere, but turn this into just something that streams out HD video all the time. Well, I'm I'm not part of the police state, so I would just be interested in this and for like like I said, for maybe doing like a wildlife camera. We're trying to do some stuff with Big Marsh over by our school, which is one of the new parks in Chicago and it's on the former US Steel uh 
plant lands and there's a lot of wildlife out there i think that'd be like a really cool thing to maybe set up and that would be like a trap what they call like a trap camera where um the as the animal passes it activates and takes a picture usually an infrared type picture like a you know they could take a picture in dark conditions um and it's just kind of fun to kind of see what goes by and what's checking out through the the area you know yeah what's moving through so and yeah, that might be a good use for it because that's something you know if you had a little battery pack it would you know you could actually power it for a few days and see what you caught quote, quote. yeah so. yeah you could put a big battery pack in and put it out in the you know somewhere where you would suspect there's something going on and then just leave it and then come back in a couple of days and, yeah, and see what, what you caught yeah yeah that's what they mean by it so it's kind of a cool idea but i don't know look i have to play with that so uh photo booth like you're actually set up like the type of thing that you have like at at weddings and stuff or what yeah yeah, so that one, uh, yeah, that one's cool. I think uh, I think I'm most proud of that one. That one took me a long time. I took a lot of my work home when I was making that. Uh, so that's like, but yeah, the point is that you go to like these weddings and you know you have like a simple photo booth. I guess now they're kind of like a little more sophisticated, but you know normally it would be like you pay like a thousand dollars for like these two guys that come up and like set up a thing, sure. and then you know you get like a nice a photo booth. You get four pictures on a strip or something like that. Yeah. Um, uh, a pie can do that. Um, actually, I, I have one upstairs. If you want, if, when we're done, I can I can show you what my setup looks like. Um, but if you've ever seen me at, uh, well, you probably haven't. But uh, so I made that one. I made like three, four years ago, and uh, I take that to when the library does stuff, like outreach events. Like we go to like the park to promote library stuff. I always bring that with me because you know people can get a nice takeaway, and I put you know our you know, yeah, every hours and phone number and yeah. stuff at the bottom. Yeah. And, like, yeah. 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 and it's completely portable. You know, it fits in a, uh, um, like a, uh, like a paper box. The whole thing, I don't know if you can see the size of this, would fit in, in a box like this size. Oh. Um, that would be like the pie and the screen so you can see yourself and the printer so it can print something out and give it to you. Oh. And, cool. It's all portable because it's running off like the little battery packs that we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I think for the printer, I usually I have to kind of use like an old, uh, an old UPS, like an old, uh, old battery backup sort of thing. Um, <laughs> but it's a nice um, takeaway, I, and I've taken it to like, I don't know, I can't tell you like how many like you know, like personal events, like family parties and stuff like that that I take. <laughs> right. Yeah, and then cool. people like uh, you know, and then it's another. I'll, I'll just show you uh, later when, uh, when we're done. But that's a, uh, to me, that's a really cool project because um, it demonstrates a lot, you know, you, you know, input because, you know, somebody would have to walk up and push a button to start the thing. And then you have the display because you have to see what you look like in the frame. Right. And then taking the pictures and saving them. And then it gets a lot more software development that's built into that. But you can, I'm pretty sure there's similar projects like that you can download the whole thing. And they would just tell you like, okay, connect a button to these pins and connect like this to this. Still, how cool. That's neat. Yeah. So that uh, buzzer game system is kind of whatever. Um, it's like similar to the uh, like trivia, like Jeopardy or something where like, you know, you yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. clicker and only one person can buzz in until somebody yeah. does something. We do that with Kahoot in the education system, except people kids use their cell phones. Yeah. I think Kahoot's probably better because Everybody has like, a, I mean, you just go to a website on your cell phone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, kiosks and all, yeah. So kiosks I talk about, like we use some of those at the library to just show like, you know, upcoming events or something like that. Um, you know, basic things like that. And then audio announcements uh, is just another, uh, we, um, you know, so t uh, yesterday we opened for um, appointment-based library stuff. Um, so that means like every half hour, you know, a different group has to come in. So uh, someone asked me, can we have something that just like makes a little ding or something, makes some kind of noise, like at the half hour to say like, hey, your session is about to end. You know, you check out your I books. That person to roll in, yeah. Yeah, so that like to me, I was like, oh, well, geez, like a pie could do that like easily. So. Um, a Pi Zero could easily do that. It's just like something to say, uh, play a sound every so long and connect it to your PA system, your overhead PA system. So that's just another example. 
Um, oh, oh. Hang on, it sounds like my dog might be out, out. Hang on one second here. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So as long as that's going on, we'll take a look at some books. And let's see. So what's happening now is I'm going to the Swan Library website and, oops. Anyways, we had. I'm back. I'm so sorry. Um, my. Uh, it's quite all right. Fence, I wasn't sure I'd close the fence last night, and I heard my dog barking in the backyard. I was like, "Oh, sweet lord, he is like, cornered the mailman down the street." But he didn't. It was okay. My husband's in the backyard with them, so they were just playing. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. "All for naught." Um, I see, we have uh, another guest. Trying to make sure you're not stuck in a waiting room. Oh, okay. uh, I, I. Uh, so quickly for both of you, I, I sort of like double booked the uh, event for 10 and 11. So it's basically, we're gonna be like getting it twice to make sure that everybody's uh, covered here. So I'm, I'm gonna start uh, some, with some basic things again when we get to the top of the hour. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, the last thing I was gonna talk about though was the uh, books that we have in, in the collection. Um, so basically I'm just looking at the Swan Library Catalog for our library, so the books, so if you put, I'm gonna put pie, so I don't get just stuff about raspberries. <laughs> yeah, we have a number of books in our collection. We have- uh, oh, Okay, you cool. And you can just obviously, and they do have the Kindle version too, so like I could even download it on my Kindle. Yep, yeah, so Kindle, Adobe EPUB, read in browser. Some, yeah, some of them you can even just read like as if it was a website. Right. There are some good physical books as well. Uh, this one I sort of looked at, this one seems pretty good. This one, I don't think I've looked at this one, but there's a number of programming getting started. Yeah, so we, the, yeah, the point, uh, so Python is a, a programming language that works well with Raspberry Pi. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, normally when they're saying like, uh, like a basic thing would be like program a, LED to turn on and off at like a certain interval or something. Uh -huh. Usually, almost all the examples they use Python programming code to make that happen. Mm, it's usually just a couple lines. Um, in fact, that whole like photo booth thing that we we're talking about, like I did that entire thing in, in Python. It's, a, it's an easy language to learn uh, if you don't, if you're not familiar with computer programming um, already. So they go hand in hand a lot of time because uh, they work well together. Yeah, that is the, yeah, I'm making a robot would be, it's kind of something I want to do. I have some other ideas that I want to use some of the same principles for. But uh, I think that is, so yeah, we have a bunch of books in the library. Let's just say that. Okay, cool. So normally it'd be the questions, comments section, and then I would basically run probably the same class again uh, at 11. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciated all this. This was certainly a great intro to understanding what's going on with the Raspberry Pis. Okay. I, I definitely need to like do a little more browsing, but this is like one of my goals for the summer, uh, especially since we're like basically social quarantining. Um, it'll be give me a lot of options to kind of sit down and focus and figure out what I want to do with this. And I'm glad to know that we have uh, resources like paper resources, books and things at the library. Of course they do. But um, and I assume since you're in the tech, Agnes, if I needed to, I can like corner you and get more info. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm there. Well, I mean, now, we're, you know, we're I know, social isolation, so I'm only there one day a week, but when yeah. it's all back to normal, yes, I'm a, okay. I basically am downstairs all the time. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. All right.